Walt Disney presents from Frontierland, the Swamp Fox, Tory Vengeance, starring Leslie Nielsen. Mr. Marion, some dry goons coming down the road. Could be Tarleton. You flog one more American patriot, and I'll put you on that spit myself. The defeat of General Lincoln and his army of 5,000 men at the siege of Charleston was the climax to a long series of setbacks for the dispirited Continental Army. Also, with this large army out of action, the Swamp Fox and his guerrilla band were the only effective fighting force left to oppose the Redcoats in the South. Because he never had enough men or ammunition to mount a proper attack, the Swamp Fox had to rely on speed and the element of surprise to win his victories. But win them he did, and these victories served a twofold purpose. They upset the timetable of General Cornwallis's battle plan, and even more important, news of the Swamp Fox's daring raids rekindled the fighting spirit of General Washington's sorely tried army to the north. There was little our struggling colonies could do to support Francis Marion and his hardy band of freedom fighters. But they did show their gratitude by giving Marion a field promotion to the rank of Brigadier General. It's signed by John Rutledge, Governor of South Carolina, and John Hancock, President of the Continental Congress. In this newest adventure from the life and legend of Francis Marion, You'll see how the Tory colonists who opposed our young nation's fight for independence resorted to ruthless means in their efforts to stamp out the Swamp Fox. It's titled, Tory Vengeance. Stop quarreling and choose sides. The little girls still want to be generals, do they, daughter? And why not? They're smarter than the boys. The war would be over now if Martha Washington was running things. That'll settle it. Let me be the Swamp Fox, please. You can't be nothing. You're a girl. Come on, girls. It's much more fun singing. Come on. I win. I'm the Swamp Fox. Give me the hat. I pick you, you, and you. You're Tarleton. And go hide your eyes. Got no corn phone. Got no honey. All we got is cotton and a money. Got no corn phone, got no honey. All we got is cotton and a money. No we'll keep any of you. How many are rich? Roasted in the possum is all we ever get. Swamp fox, swamp fox, tail on the hat. Nobody knows where the swamp fox is. Swamp fox, swamp fox, hides in the swim. He runs away to fight again. Got no blankets, got no bed. Do me a favor, sir. Run to the professor. Go away. I'm Swamp Fox. I'm hiding. Oh. Sorry. Is anybody riding this way, mister? Well, now that depends. Who are you? Colonel Tarleton. And I'm chasing the Swamp Fox. Did you see him? I'm sorry. I couldn't betray a fellow countryman. You see, I'm a patriot, too. So am I, but I had to be Tarleton, or they wouldn't let me play. Thanks, mister. I'll tell the professor you're here. All right, children, let's play. The 
There's a man waiting down there to see you. Thank you. Jack! It must be a matter of great urgency, Colonel Marion, to bring you here in daylight. It's, it's not about young Gabe, is it, Colonel? I mean, anything bad? No, Melanie, it's not about Gabe. We expect him home in a day or two. Why don't you run along and keep an eye out for us, will you? All right. Your nephew's been gone three weeks now, Colonel Marion, and... To a girl in love, that's almost a lifetime. And what with so many redcoats moving around our parish these days, she has reasons to worry. Yes, uh, Professor, did you or the children see any redcoats or Tories moving about this morning? Yes, uh, the little Pickens boy reported a number of horsemen moving in the direction of the Towns plantation. Colonel Towns? Yes. One of the most active Tory leaders in the parish. Anything else? Well, as a matter of fact, yes, but it concerns Mary Vito, and I'm reluctant to mention it. I want you to tell me, Professor. That's why I'm here. This morning, a few miles from camp, we found Mary Badeau's houseboy, Toby, dead. Been beaten. If he's carrying a message, that could explain the beating and his death. And in that case, Mary's in danger, and I've got to find her. Then I suggest you go to the town's plantation. The little Cottrell girl saw her driving her this morning and yelled Tory at her. You know how children are. Yes. I'd like Mary to... Well, someday the people will find out the truth about Mary. For the present, let them think what they'd like. Good day to you, sir. Good day, Colonel. Good luck to you. Take the boy to his father, old Joseph, at the Badeau plantation. No carriage, I recognize old Joseph up there in the box. Well, it looks peaceful enough. Yeah, it could be that Toby was caught by Tarleton and Towns doesn't know anything about it yet. I hope so, otherwise Mary might be falling into a trap right now. Got to put her on guard. I have to be awful careful, friend. As far as they're concerned, Mary's a Tory. If they have any suspicion there's a tie between you two, she's gonna be in real trouble. Yeah, you're right, Pete. Now listen, men. These aristocratic Tories seem to think that patriots are nothing but barbarians, so that's exactly what we're going to be. But take the house, pour it on thick, but don't let on you know Mary. And remember, we're just a little play acting. O'Reilly? Yes, sir. We're just pretending. Oh, yes, sir. Let's go. <laughs> Miss Vito, what shall I do? My wife moves about as much as this fellow they call the Swamp Fox. My dear, you must stop fidgeting. How awful of you, Charles, to compare me with that dreadful man. He is dreadful, isn't he, Mary? Oh, well, he seemed like a gentleman the few times I met him. Then you really know him. Oh, well, only slightly. He was a neighbor of ours before the war. Well, if one can believe what one hears, he must be a monster. Well, it would seem to depend upon which side of the war you were on, Mrs. Towns. Some people think Colonel Tarleton's a monster also. But, of course, you and I know that he isn't. Did I hear you say he was coming for tea? Yes, that's right. That should be him now. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Colonel, but uh, uh, monster or gentleman, it's the man we've been discussing. Swamp Fox. The Swamp Fox? Here? Charles? Charles, where are you? Jody? Raymond? Oh, I think I'm going to faint. Oh, not here, Celia. Upstairs. Quickly. Hurry, Mary. Well, well, oh. what have we here? Three Tory wenches, no doubt, just oh. waiting oh. for good strong arms about their waist. O'Reilly, oh. feet left flank. <laughs> ah, not oh. wenches, Colonel. Ladies. Well, the Colonel's been hiding in the swamp so long he doesn't know the difference. Take your hands off me, you <laughs> rebel yeah, pig. Yeah. Well, now, we have three beautiful ladies, a fancy ballroom, but nothing to drink. No, no, business before pleasure, Pete. 
Now, which of you ladies is Mrs. Towns? Now, just a minute. I want to guess. Mrs. Towns is reputed to be the most beautiful woman in the Carolinas, so that must be you. I am Mrs. Towns. Now, get out before I... Before you what, Mrs. Towns? Call your husband? Please do so. We're all anxiously waiting to see him. My husband isn't home. Now, please go. Oh, no, not before we sample some of your famous hospitality, Mrs. Towns. Would you send one of your servants out to supply my men outside with food and drink? Never. Very well. Uh, Sergeant, would you uh, have the men raid the kitchen? Yes, sir. Don't go away, sweetie. I'll be right back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you ladies would be kind enough to rustle up a little food and drink, we could make a very happy occasion out of this. And you called him a gentleman. Well, I, I only knew him slightly. You can see he doesn't remember me. Oh, you must be mistaken, lady. How could I forget you? I don't think we've ever met such a pretty face. Are you sure you're not Mrs. Towns? Oh! You won't be so brave when Colonel Tarleton gets here. Oh, Colonel Tarleton doesn't frighten us. Oh, you get <laughs> out of here if you know what's good for you. Well, look what I found. Peach brandy. Come here, little one. You take a taste of this and you'll forget you're a lady. Oh! I guess you don't like peach brandy. Oh! <laughs> lady, help! I don't need no help, lady. <laughs> <laughs> Me? How about you? Oh, you barbarians. I'll have you hanged for this. <laughs> Raymond! Taddy! Oh, hurry, Mary. They won't spare you. <laughs> oh, darling. I'm so sorry. Did it hurt? Oh, you promised me that after we're married... Don't talk. Tarleton will be here any minute. I've been trying to tell you. Yeah, I've got to talk to you. I found Toby this morning. He'd been killed. Oh, no. Did you send him with a message? Oh, yes, to tell you that Tarleton was coming. Well, then you watch out. Because if they got that from Toby, you're in danger. Oh, Mary! Let's go, let's go, you! Let's go, let's go, you! Ruth! Mary, hurry! Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> Uh, Sergeant. Yes, sir. It's a little chilly in here. Don't you think we should light the fire? Now, that's a good idea. A fire on a day like this? Ah, you must be suffering from sunstroke. Oh, it certainly is. Too bad we missed old Colonel Towns, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, how do you figure he snared such a beautiful wife? Oh, money, of course. What else? You think she's a loving wife? I have the first hand she isn't. But then what the old boy doesn't know won't hurt him, will it? <laughs> <laughs> Well, what do you suppose that is? I don't know, sir. You don't think this could be old Colonel Towns, do you? It could be. Yeah, this could be that ferocious old Tory who delights in flogging innocent people. You would have your men killed Toby, the Vado servant boy, this morning? I don't have to answer to you, Marion. Let's roast this baddie rooster a little longer. Aye. Let's put him on the spit and get him done even all around like. Mr. Marion, some dry goons coming down the road. Could be Tarleton. Mount up. You flog one more American patriot and I'll put you on that spit myself. Oscar was right. Tarleton's dragoons. Look at them. Aren't they the pretty ones, though? <laughs> All spit and polish. I'll be ashamed to muss them up. Well, I'm afraid we'll have to have better odds before we try that, Sergeant. All right, let's go. Forward at a gallop! They're just rebel prowlers, no doubt. Not worth the chase. Come on, men. Let's take a whack at it. Easy, easy, Peter. A little short-handed. O'Reilly? Yes, sir. Get back to camp and get the brigade. We'll stay here and keep an eye on Mary. Well, we'll meet, sir. My brother's place after dark. 
Very good. Halt! Thank heavens you got here in time, Colonel Tarleton. I've never been through such a harrowing experience. Those, those brutes were actually tossing a coin to, to see who kissed me. Had I been here, dear lady, I would have fought for that same privilege. Hogwash. While you're standing here talking drivel, they're getting away. What on earth happened to you, Colonel? And who are those rascals we chased off? None other than the Swamp Fox himself, you blunderer. Well, what a pity if I'd only known. However, it's something to look forward to, sir. Oh, Miss Vidal. What an unexpected pleasure. I was just leaving. You really shouldn't, you know, with that dreadful Swamp Fox lurking about. Oh, I'm not afraid. Goodbye. Thanks for the tea. Yes, of course. You know, Mrs. Town's quite right, my dear. It's much too dangerous for you to travel alone. I shall accompany you. Oh, that's very kind of you, Colonel. Good day, sir. Madam. Will you excuse me for just a moment? Tie my horse to the back of the carriage, please, will you? Home, Joseph. Forward! Somebody's with Mary. Why, that's Tarleton. And no dragoons around him? How foolish can he get? Yeah, it's a little too foolish. Look, feet there, in the back of the carriage. Tarleton's up to some trickery, and I think I know what it is. Here, flank it. Yes, Put sir. this on. Get up ahead. Let them see you and lead them off. Jenkins, you and Oscar go with them. Yes, sir. Come on. Come on, men. Follow me. Come on, Peter. Lovely day, isn't it? Isn't it? It's difficult to imagine this pastoral beauty masking the ugly scars of war and death. Like a woman's beauty, concealing the treachery of an infamous heart. <sighs> You're a philosopher as well as a soldier. No, no, I was merely reluctant to bring up a most distasteful subject. But as you say, I'm a soldier. Most unfortunate incident occurred this morning. Some of Townsend's men saw a boy riding towards the nesting grounds in the swamps. They called on him to halt. When he didn't, they shot his horse down. When they caught up with him, he was swallowing something, obviously a message. He wouldn't have vouched what was in it, so they whipped him. I'm afraid they overdid it. They killed him. But why are you telling this to me, Colonel Tarleton? Because it was your servant boy, Toby, Mary. Oh. Toby was a good boy. They had no right to kill him. Speak when you're spoken to, man. Toby was my son. Haven't I got a right to speak, Miss Mary? Yes, Joseph, but not here. Go on, please. Yes, Miss Mary. Boys like Toby only do what they're told. Did they have to kill him? He was carrying a message, wasn't he? Yes. Well, when he refused to disclose what was in it, they considered it a treasonable act. Of course, you could disprove this by telling me what was in it and to whom it was going. What if I said the message was for you? What a pity. I shall never know what endearing terms you might have used. Unless, of course, you just happen to remember them. Perfectly. I said I'd learned that the Swamp Fox was planning a raid on the town's place today, and it would be a good opportunity for you to trap him. And supposing that I told you that Toby never did destroy that message and that I know what was in it? I'd call you a liar, Colonel Tarleton. Why, Mary? 
Because I never wrote a message. Toby was simply told what to say. He was chewing something. Everybody saw it. Toby was always chewing pine pitch. He said it kept his teeth clean. You do believe me, don't you? Of course. I'd hate to see a rope chafe that lovely neck of yours. Oh, don't be alarmed. My men are following. This is just a duel of wits between Mr. Marion and myself. Colonel Tarleton, I believe. You must be the Swamp Fox. Yes, I've been called that. I understand you placed a price on my head. Or is it the whole hide you want? I hope you keep your sense of humor when I have a rope around your neck. It's a pleasure I have no intention of giving you. Would you uh, be kind enough to step out of the carriage? You'll let us go if you know what's good for you. These woods are full of dragoons. Don't worry, Mary. There's no hurry. I enjoy talking to this fellow. That's particularly if you think your dragoons are close by. Which they aren't. <laughs> they won't show up, Colonel. They're busy chasing a man with a tail on his hat. Marion, you're a scoundrel. I wouldn't, Tarleton. Just hand it over. Stock first. Beautiful weapon. Too bad you fellows can't use these as well as you make them. Now, would you step out and mount up? On your way, lady. Next time, choose better company. Go on, Joseph. old boy. I don't want your hide with a hole in it. I shall guard it with my life, Tarleton. I hope to see you again soon. You will. After it, man, it's a swamp box. in farmhouse. Pick me up after dark. Yes, ma'am. Mary, you shouldn't have come here in broad daylight. But I had to. I promised Bran I'd meet him here. Come in the house. Now, Mary, don't you worry about Fran. The Tory doesn't live that can catch him in the swamp country. You two I'm worried about. Folks still think I'm a Tory. If they see me come here, they'll want to burn your nice new home down, like they did before. Don't say any more about it. We're doing little enough to help the war. Besides, they did us a favor. The old place was ready to fall down anyway. Tell me, does old Joseph know about his boy's death? Poor Joseph. Oh, it's all my fault. It wasn't Toby's war. You're wrong, Miss Mary. It was Toby's war. Just like it's my war. Just like it's all decent people's war. Now, don't you go blaming yourself, child. Old Joseph won't. I wonder who that could be. Young Gabe, he's back. All the way to Camden to see the governor, no less. Oh, the stories that boy's gonna tell. <laughs> Is 
Excuse me, ma'am. Is the master of your house in? He sure is, sir. And is he going to be surprised? <laughs> the occasion is not called for joking, ma'am. Tell your master that the governor's emissary is here to see him. The governor's emissary? What? Boy, what are you talking about? Madam, I am the governor's emissary. Now, will you tell him, please? Yes, sir, your majesty. <laughs> Mr. Marion, there's a mighty fine-looking uh, Emmy something or another for the governor here to see you. Well, dear, you show the Emmy something or other in. Uh, we mustn't keep him waiting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. You can come in now, but first scrape your feet. Lieutenant Marion reporting for duty, sir. My credentials. Oh, well. Gabe! Gabe, you look oh, splendid. Oh. Don't tell me you've gone and joined us. Yes, sir, it says right here, Lieutenant Marion. Lieutenant Gabriel Marion. Oh, Gabe, I can't believe it. Oh, now, Kathy, all I did was get myself made an officer. Oh, and you look handsome, too. Only I don't think your Uncle Francis is going to be pleased. He sure isn't. When the Colonel sees you in that uniform, he's going to have a conniption fit, and that's a fact. He's not a colonel anymore. He's a brigadier general. And Major Orr is a full colonel. Here, see for yourself. My, my, everybody in this family is a general of something except me. The coat's a little bit big yet, but Delia can take it in. I ain't taking in nothing. You gonna fill it out. So sit right down there so I can start filling. I'll sure be glad when I get to Snow Island with Uncle Fran. Maybe there I'll be treated like an officer. Your Uncle Fran's coming here, so you wait and go back with him. Oh, that's great. I'll have time to... I've got to see somebody. It's important. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Don't you go traipsing around the country in that uniform. Take it off. I will. Tell Uncle Fran to wait for me. All right. Good afternoon, Professor Culpin. Why, bless me, what have we here? Melody, we have a visitor, and I'm not sure I know him. Well, will you come, please? Gabe! Hello, Melanie. Oh, Gabe. I, I don't know what to say. Well, ask him in before some Tory spots him and puts a hole in that coat. It already has one, where the last man got it. Don't talk like that. You come right in and let me sew that hole up. Go ahead, Gabe. I have some chores to do. Let me have it, please. I... I missed you, Melanie. I missed you, too, Gabe. I was afraid that... What does it mean, Gabe? What does what mean? The coat. Well, it means I'm an officer. I know that, silly. What does being an officer mean? Are you going away? Well, sure, that's the idea. The fight game? Well, of course. <laughs> but I'll be riding with Uncle Fran, so I'll be nearby. But you'll still be fighting. Well, it isn't like I was joining Gates or Moultrie. Fighting's fighting no matter where you are. But I have to, Melanie. Don't you understand? I'm not a kid anymore drawing pictures on your father's blackboard. I wish you were. I wish we all were. It's not a nice time to grow up, Gabe. All the hating and the shooting and the killing going on. Uncle Fran says it's a good time. He says that we have a hand in the building of our own nation, that we can shape its destiny. That sounds pretty important, don't you think? I sure appreciate your acting so grown up and all. I was afraid that maybe you'd try and stop me and start blubbering like Aunt Kathy. I won't blubber. If we're going to be grown up, we ought to act grown up, shouldn't we? Of course. Well, anyway, it's, it's not like I was going away forever. 
Why, on a, on a lieutenant's pay for even 12 months, I can build a house on the 200 acres Uncle Fran promised me. You know the piece I mean? I know. Would you, would you like that, Melanie? A house, I mean? Oh, that's wonderful. I was hoping... Well, you know what I was hoping. I can't sew if you hold my hand. Look at me, Melanie. Oh, Gabe, I guess I'm not grown up at all. But I'm afraid. I don't want you to go. It'll be all right. You'll see. <coughs> Clouding up. Looks like we might have a shower. Professor Culpin, Melanie and I are going to be married. That's fine. Glad to have you for a son, Gabe. Stay for supper? I can't. I promised Aunt Kathy I'd be home to meet Uncle Fran. Then take care of yourself. Come when you can. Goodbye, Melanie. Bye, Gabe. the marrying plan. Didn't know you'd take inside, young Gabe. We didn't catch the swamp fox, but we got one of his pups. Old town will open up a keg of brandy for this one. <laughs> Fran. Gabe? Peter? How are you, Gabe? Door open, keep an eye out, will you please? Kathy, Delia. Did you have any trouble? No one saw me, and I sent Joseph on with the carriage. Oh, Fran, it was a close one. Yeah, almost too close. Mary, I'm worried about you. That message you sent with Toby, what did it say? That Tarleton would be at the town's place for tea. I thought you might capture him. <laughs> Maybe next time. Did Tarleton get that message from Toby? I don't know. He said he had, but I told him he was lying. I said there wasn't any written message. It seemed to stop him. But there was a written message. Yes. Mary, I'm sure Tarleton doesn't have it, otherwise you wouldn't be here right now, but after what's happened, they must suspect you. Darling, they'll be watching you like a hawk. The slightest misstep. Oh, you don't frighten me, General. I said we were in this war together, and I meant it. Now, stop talking and sit down. Delia's just dying to have you compliment her pot. That's right, General. And you too, Colonel Ori. <laughs> General? Colonel? Aren't you two being rather careless with your promotions? Yeah, why don't you try and get us a raise and pay to go with them? <laughs> <laughs> They're not joking. And here's a paper to prove it. Why, it's true, Peter. A signed by Governor Rutledge himself. Where'd you get this? Young Gabe, oh, pardon me, Lieutenant Marion. Lieutenant? That's right, Fran. Signed by the governor, same as yours. He was so pleased about the uniform, Francis. Where's young Gabe now? Over at Melanie's, we think. He was simply bursting with pride. Well, you're not letting him write about these parish roads in that uniform, are you? No, but I think he'll put it on to impress Melanie. Sure. 
ahead and let him go, Gabe. In the woods, sir. I didn't want to be riding them into any trap. Good. Good. And here's the decoy, Colonel. It worked like a charm. <laughs> Gabe, I think I gotta ride over to Melanie's and see what's becoming that boy. I'll be with you. Gabriel! Gabby! They'll kill him! I know they will! Kill who, Melanie? Young Gabe, you've gotta stop them! Stop who? Stop who, Melanie? Briggs and some of Colonel Child's men. Briggs wounded Gabe and they chased after him. I'll get the troop mounted up. If they did catch him, they'll be over the town's plantation. Come on, yes, Pete. I'll get my horse and meet you there. What is it, Briggs? Caught an important prisoner, Colonel. I think you'll be real pleased. I'll be the judge of that. What's his name? Young Gabe Marion. Swamp Fox's nephew. Indeed. We've done a good night's work. This is a stroke of luck, Tarleton. We'll make the young pup take us to the fox's hiding place in the swamp. I doubt that, sir. The Marion's a very loyal clan. A few lashes of Briggs' whip will test his loyalty. Bring him in. Wait, sir. I object to your whipping tactics. So do I. It's nothing but the Inquisition all over again. This is war. War is a struggle for survival. I choose to survive, that's all. Bring in the prisoner, and don't forget your whip, Briggs. I have very few scruples, Colonel. I'll eat your food and drink your liquor and even flirt with your wife, I'm given the chance. But I do draw the line at beating and shooting innocent people. I told you that when your men killed that servant boy, Toby. For a soldier, you're mighty squeamish about killing a man. There's a certain code of ethics that the military tries to observe, sir. If you cannot follow that code, I shall have to withdraw my dragoons and refuse any further military support. Then take off and the devil go with you. I don't need your help. Very good, sir. Good night, madam. Your arm, Colonel. I, too, have a weak stomach for after-dinner whippings. Excuse me, Colonel. Don't be afraid, my lad. You look a sensible sort of fellow in spite of the uniform you're wearing. Just answer a few questions, and maybe I'll get you a captain safe on the right side. Forward! Ho! Tarleton. He's leaving. You told him to go. He'll come back. He'll come back crawling. You'll see. Now, let's get down to business. As an officer in your uncle's brigade, you must know where he hides when he takes to the swamp. Well, do you? Yes, sir, I do. Will you lead us to him? No, sir. Consider carefully. We caught you spying. I wasn't. I'm not a spy. I say you are. And do you know what we do to spies? We shoot them. But first, we have a milder form of punishment. Show the young man what could happen to him. Believe me, my lad, it rips the flesh just as easily. Are you ready to take us to your uncle's camp? No. Take off your coat and shirt.
Now will you take us? I've wasted enough time on this fellow. Take him outside. What are you going to do? Put him in front of the rifles. Oh, you wouldn't dare. It's only to frighten him. Get out there about ten paces and shoot straight. The sooner we finish this job, the sooner we get that keg of whiskey Colonel Town promised. Yeah, that's what we want. <laughs> Are you sure you're just going to frighten him? Ready, boys? Loyalty is an admirable quality when devoted to a just cause. You're wasting yours on a traitor. Uncle Fran is not a traitor. He's a patriot. You're the traitor. You're trying my patience, young man. Ready with your rifles. I'm going to give you one last chance to save your life. Will you take us to Marion's camp? No. Aim. The last time, say you'll take us. Him, didn't we, Uncle Fran? Yes, we licked him, boy. Get Dr. Grubbs. Hold on tight. <coughs> Who did it, Gabe? A man named Briggs, Mr. Marion. He didn't have to. There was no cause. Just shot him down. <laughs> Easy, boy. There's nothing to be afraid of.
heaven ain't a hole you dig when little children die heaven is a place so big it nearly fills the sky heaven ain't a place to fear no place I'm scared to try heaven <laughs> <laughs> So many young men. When is it going to stop, Colonel Marion? I don't know. I wish I knew. You make the war. Why don't you know? Not now, Mrs. Towns, please. What is it you want, Colonel? What is it you're after? It's nothing. It's, it's not for me. Then for whom? Your nephew? Is it worth the price he paid? Only time will tell that, Mrs. Towns. Only time will tell. Francis Marion, the Swamp Fox, was a mild-mannered man. He spoke softly when he talked, which was seldom, for he was not a talkative man. The death of his nephew, young Gabe, at the hands of the enemy was a needless act, and it changed the Swamp Fox. He became an enraged man, sworn to vengeance. In our program next week, titled Day of Reckoning, we find the Swamp Fox scouring the Carolina countryside, searching for Amos Briggs the man responsible for young Gabe's death. I want Briggs. Come on, speak up. Where is he? Where's Briggs? Are you a friend of Briggs? I want him. Where is he? I don't know. I don't know. I said, where is he? Is he, Fred? I've killed a few men. Uh, I... Briggs is the only man I've ever wanted to kill out of pure hate. You're a soldier. You're sworn to obey orders. That's right, General. I joined up to fight the Redcoats, but I got a lot of kinfolk amongst them Tories, and I don't aim to kill them all off of hunting for the man that shot your nephew. You know, General, you clean forgot about the war. And so moves another adventure in the life of the Swamp Bucks, Robin Hood of the American Revolution. These were perilous days when men lived and died for the cause of human liberty. No greater patriot among them than the Swamp Fox. Honored by the men who served with him, respected and feared by his enemies. A man dedicated to his country's cause, devoted to the one woman he loved. But his enemies were everywhere. His life threatened on all sides. Even death was concealed within his own ranks. Let me kill him, he deserves to die! <laughs> then came the day of reckoning, when fate answered the Swamp Fox's vow to avenge the death of young Gabe. Let him go. Outside. Are you thrilled? It's the Swamp Fox. See him, man. It's lit. Might be a good idea for you gentlemen to use the back door. For adventure to take you out of the world of reality. For action that's new, different, exciting. Be with us next week when Walt Disney presents The Swamp Fox in Day of Reckoning. Who's this? 
this is Briggs. This is the mountain. These are the men who sought to conquer it. One, two, three of them. And these are the women who feared they would never return. You lied to me. And no one, wife, mother, or sweetheart, has the right to make him into something he wasn't meant to be. See Walt Disney's Third Man on the Mountain, coming soon to a theater near you. This has been an ABC Television Network film presentation.